Hello, and thank you for choosing the Legacy Lawyers as your source of information. We know this might be a difficult time you're going through, but we are here to educate you and help you through the process. Please stay tuned for our question and answer portion. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, David. How's your Monday going so far? It's very good. It's very good. It's, 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 it's very uh, hopeful in <laughs> that the week is going to be delightful well, following good. this day. That's really good to hear. <laughs> Okay, so you know, this week we're talking about bonds. Mm -hmm. So this is our second in our five-part series this week. Okay. What happens if you aren't eligible for a bond? Okay, so except for very limited circumstances, the conservator uh, is required to post a bond for finances if they are to be conservator of the estate. So uh, generally speaking, if you don't qualify for a bond at all, uh, you're not a good choice to be a conservator of the estate. However, there, uh, the more common situation that people deal with is, I don't qualify for enough bond. So let's just say that there are no other interested or better choices uh, to be conservator of the estate. Uh, let's just say we have an only child and that uh, you know, mom or dad has a lot of assets and a lot of income and a house and uh, the child is the only choice and the bond is going to have to be something like you know five hundred thousand dollars and uh, what we have is a hundred let's just say four hundred thousand dollars in cold hard cash and a hundred thousand dollars in securities or something then the uh, child who is appointed conservator can seek to chip away at the amount of bond required so generally speaking, you don't have to bond for the personal residence because generally speaking, that requires some sort of court order to sell the residence. So you're not going to be bonding for real estate, generally speaking. Then you have $400,000 in cash. And, you know, this is just cold, hard cash. And it's not really necessary to access that cash on an ongoing basis. So what you can do is in lieu of bonding for that money, you can ask the court to authorize you to place X amount of dollars into a blocked account. So that is a court ordered blocked account. And what that means is the court recognizes that, that there's this cash and they're going to authorize a deposit into a bank account where no withdrawals may be made without court order. So the court has sufficient comfort that the conservator won't just be writing checks out of that account. They're gonna actually have to ask the court for permission, say I have a special circumstance in which I need to draw this money out and uh, I'm going to give you the exact amount and you're gonna give me an order for withdrawal of that exact amount to a specific payee. So to that effect, there's no free access to the account. And f you can chip away the bond amount by having a lot of the cash be put into a blocked account. Uh, this is actually quite common in our practice. And uh, so that's uh, one way to reduce the bond. Another way to reduce the bond is if the conservator uh, is not the spouse or is the spouse and there's community property and community income, you know, there's uh, some exclusions for management of a conservatorship estate um, in which you can be bonded and supervised over certain assets and have other community assets, which are the marital assets, be managed outside of the court supervision. That's a more nuanced issue that should be discussed with your attorney. But that is a, a possibility. But generally speaking, it's the blocked account to lock up the cash. It's still there. It's not like you could never touch it. You just have to ask for permission. And that's uh, probably the most commonly used way to reduce the bond. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And if you guys have any additional questions, feel free to email us at smm at thelegacylawyers.com. Have thank a great you. day.